Chemical equations tell us what happens during a chemical reaction. They tell us what the reactants are, the things we have before any reaction, and they tell us what the products are, the things that we have after the reaction. Now we could write these down as simple word equations. Sodium plus chlorine forms sodium chloride, or hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water. But we should get into the habit of writing these two things in terms of the chemical symbols since these tell us which elements are present, how many of each element are present. So sodium plus chlorine should be written as sodium Na plus Cl2 for chlorine. And that gives us the ionic compound NaCl. Or H2 plus O2, hydrogen plus oxygen, gives us water. Now there's a principle when we write chemical equations that we can't destroy matter we can't make or destroy mass, so we must have the same number and types of atoms before the reaction and after the reaction. they just be bonded to new things. We must have the same mass, so anything we have, any mass that we have to start with, we must have at the end. And if we have charged species, we can't lose or gain charges, so the charges before must match the charges afterwards. So let's go back to our reaction between sodium and chlorine that we've rewritten as Na plus Cl2 goes to sodium chloride, NaCl. On the left of the hand we, of the arrow, we have what we start with, sodium and chlorine. And on the right of the arrow, we have what we end up with, NaCl, sodium chloride. The trouble with this equation is I've lost a chlorine atom. I've only got one in my formula on the right, yet I started off with two chlorine atoms. This can't happen. I can't just lose chlorine atoms. So I must actually be making two NaCLs for every chlorine molecule so that the two at the front here means I have two lots of sodium chloride, two lots of Cl in my NaCl matching the two chlorines that I had in my chlorine molecule to start with. But I've still got a problem. Now I'm saying that I'm making two lots of NaCl, so I'm ending up with two Na's, but I only have one on the left hand side. So I've got to go back and balance and put a 2 in front of the Na on the reactant side. And now I've got my chemical equation that's nicely balanced. Two sodiums react with one Cl2 to give us two NaCl's. This means that we'll need twice as much sodium as we have chlorine molecules to get the reaction to work properly. Every time we react one chlorine molecule, we'll get two lots of NaCl. Here's the second reaction. Hydrogen and oxygen burning to give water. I've got a problem here as well. Water only contains one oxygen atom, yet I've got two oxygen atoms in my O2 molecule. It's a similar trick as before. I put a two in front of the water, because now I've got two lots of water. Each water contains an oxygen atom, so two water molecules contain two oxygen atoms, and I've got two oxygens in my products, and I've got two oxygens in my reactants. But now how many hydrogens have I got? Well, each water contains two hydrogen atoms. So if I'm now making two waters, I've got two times two. I've got four hydrogen atoms in my products, yet I've only got two hydrogen atoms in my reactant. So again, put a two in front of the hydrogen to make sure that I've now got the same number of hydrogen atoms. Two hydrogen molecules is two H2s, which means four hydrogen atoms on the left, four hydrogen atoms on the right, and again, everything's balanced. These are called formula equations. The next thing to improve my chemical equation is to, is to indicate what the physical states are. Do I have solids? Do I have liquids? Do I have gases? Or do I have things dissolved up in water? And we show this in the chemical equation by writing the symbol S for solids with brackets, or L for liquids in brackets, or G for gas in brackets. And for things dissolved up in water, we use aqueous with AQ in brackets. So my balanced NAC, Na plus Cl2 goes to sodium chloride reaction. Sodium is going to be a solid. Chlorine is a gas. And I end up with solid salt NaCl at the end. The reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to make water. The hydrogen is a gas, the oxygen is a gas, and the water ends up being a liquid. So I've shown whoever's reading my chemical equation what phases my reactants and products are made in. Let's look at a different kind of chemical reaction. Let's look at things dissolving in water. 
So sodium chloride dissolves up in water. Salt dissolves in water. When I take my solid NaCl, crystals of salt, and I add it to water, it splits up into ions of sodium, which are in the aqueous, dissolved in water, and ions of chloride, dissolved up in water, so aqueous. The NaCl are no longer together in the crystal. They're separate in the solution, surrounded by waters. Some salts, though, don't dissolve in water. Something like silver chloride, however much I stir into water, hardly any of it dissolves. It's classified as insoluble. So there's no reaction if I try to add silver chloride to water. Or if I've got silver ions and chloride ions in solution, they will very quickly come out of solution and will precipitate them as a solid out of the solution. So let's take a reaction in which I dissolve up silver nitrate. Silver nitrate dissolves to give silver ions, aqueous, and nitrate ions, aqueous. And as we saw before, sodium chloride dissolves to give sodium ions, which are aqueous, and chloride ions, which are aqueous. So let's say we've got a beaker full of dissolved silver nitrate, and we've got a separate beaker full of dissolved silver chloride. These are called ionic equations, showing you what happens to the salt as it dissolves up to form ions. If we mix these solutions, we're going to have a solution that contains silver ions, nitrate ions, sodium ions, and chloride ions. But we said before that silver ions and chloride ions will quickly precipitate, will quickly come out of solution as a solid. So when I mix these solutions, I indeed form silver chloride solid. And the sodium ions and the nitrate ions that were there before are still there afterwards. They don't precipitate, they don't come out of solution. So the sodium ions and the nitrate ions are called spectator ions. They don't do anything, they just spectate, they don't change during the reaction. Because they're there before and they're there after, it makes sense not to write them because they're not doing anything. So I cross them out, I cancel them from the two sides of the chemical equation and all I'm left with are the things that are reacting. The silver ions and the chloride ions in aqueous solution are coming together and forming the solid silver chloride. So I'm left with a net ionic equation, which shows me only the things that are actually happening during the reaction. When I pour the two solutions together, the silver ions in solution react with the chloride ions in solution to form solid silver chloride. The sodium ions and the nitrate ions are still there in solution. They were there before I mixed, they were there after I mixed, so there's no chemical reaction and I don't include them in a net ionic equation. The only way that I can get them to do anything is to remove the water completely. So if I boil the solution and evaporate all the water, only then will the sodium ions and the nitrate ions actually get together to form solid sodium nitrate.